Here's the easiest way to set up your own vanilla Minecraft server and how to get other people to join it. Let's start by searching up Minecraft server download on Google and click on the first link. Here on this page, you'll be able to download the server jar for the latest version of Minecraft. You can download it by clicking on this bit of text right here. Once your download is done, create a new folder anywhere on your PC. This folder will contain all our server-related files, and it doesn't matter where on your PC this folder is located. I'll be creating mine on the desktop. The folder name doesn't matter either. Move the server jar into that folder, and then open that folder and double-click on the jar to start installing the server. It might seem like nothing is happening, but give it like 30 to 40 seconds, and you'll see all these folders and files start filling up our main folder. Everything is complete when you notice this EULA text file show up. Double click on the EULA file to open it and change this false to true. Save and close the EULA file and double click on the server jar again to continue and complete the server installation. When you see this thing show up, it means that your server is actively running. But now, if you want to configure how much RAM you want to allocate to your server, we have to do one more thing. Back in your folder, create a new text file. The name for it doesn't really matter. Inside, copy and paste the command I have in the description. This command dictates how much RAM we want to allow the server to use using this number. This number is going to directly be the number of gigabytes given to the server. Now, go ahead and click on Save As, and for the file name, type in start.bat and save. You can now delete that new text file we just made. If you ever want to change the RAM numbers again, you can right-click on the bat file and edit in Notepad. Now every time you want to start up the server, just run the start.bat file. Now you can join your own server by typing in localhost into the server address. The next step is to allow our server through our firewall, and this step is very, very easy. In the description, I'll have four commands. Go ahead and copy all of them together. Open Windows Search and type in PowerShell. Open it as administrator. Now just press Ctrl plus V, or click on the right mouse button, to paste in the commands. Then just press Enter to run the command and it should do its thing. Now we need to move on to enabling port forwarding on our router settings. The process should be the same regardless of whatever router you have. In my case, it's AZTE model. But in all routers, you should be able to find a section called Port Forwarding. Now select the protocol to be TCP and UDP. For these VAN ports, paste in the server port which we used earlier. Now we need to fill in this LAN host IP address. To do that, open your start and search up CMD and run it as administrator. Now type in ipconfig and press enter. This ipv4 address is the one we need. Go ahead and copy it. You can just select it and press Ctrl plus C. Now you can paste the IP into this field and finally paste the port number into these two fields too. This is basically what you need to replicate into your router settings. The layout and wording might be different, but it'll essentially ask you the same thing. Now you can go ahead and start up your server. And in order to invite people onto your server who are outside your local network, we need to share our public IP with them. You can find out what your public IP is by simply Googling it. Use that IP as the server address and you should be able to join the server.